Bring me some of those hot potatoes! cried Mama, drifting into a Winston cup. She alluded to the specifics that was not quite required for the circumspect navigation that was necessary to unleash the purposes of the fulsome vibe by recreating a certain stance of elocution and quantum theory she managed to regulate the entire precipitation of the holy manifest and in that she was so sweet so calm so loving so loyal, so devoted, so hardworking, so clean, so conscientious, so thoughtful. She was a goddess, and I had never realized. I, being the cruel and the foolish son, had merely looked upon my mother as some kind of female contrivance by which to replicate my psyche. However, Looking back after the 43 years I've known her, and she is still alive, I realize now, without being able to access the cranium or the consciousness of another being at the first dimension, that on face value and from a response level, she is virtually perfect. There is hardly anything one could say about my mother that would be iniquitous true in a slanderous sense, vile, insidious, wicked, no, no, she's none of these things. She is Puritan, holy, faithful gold. And I have only seen it of late, and it is my shame, and it is my mockery, and it is my damn disgust that I have not spent longer in my futile 43 years devoting myself to the sheer beauty by which she manifests. <laughs> it is rare, especially in the modern sense, to know of such a domestic goddess of such beauty and love and care and sweetness and peace and innocence. She is redolent in so many graces and boons, it is remarkable to the very notion. And yet I, the spawn, half her, half my father, who is an intelligent, funny and hard-working man with a great character. And then why, why am I how I am? Well, I'll tell you, it's because I am a synthesis of two great people. I am a synthesis of two very noble subjects. I am awesome combined. And if you don't get that, and if you don't realize that, then you don't know shit about reality. Because I am not an American, I am an Englishman. But when I talk like this, I feel like I'm coming across a bit more effective. You know, a bit more... <laughs> shut them down, shut them down, shut them, shut them down! You know, ah, like, shit. Yeah, whereas, um, if I was to speak with an English accent like this, I'd feel a little more shut up home. Uh, my, my accent, indeed, for the modern part of this is Clammy for that, even over James Bond character. I say so, put that down. I sound like Roger Moore from the 80s. I can't possibly be expected to represent the late, well, mid 21st century. No, no. Well, if I did, it would be more along the lines of. Now put that down. Now put that down. Now Blofeld, put that down. No, you're a silly sausage, Blofeld. No, fuck you, Blofeld. Oh, James Bond would never swear. See, that's why I'm not James Bond. Um, Indiana Jones, he, he did swear, but I don't know if he said the F word. Please put me right if he did. He might have done at one point in a knowing kind of jest where, where swearing in cinema is used by the masters so liberally, not liberally, so rarely but when it is, it's, it's used to emphasise the height of despair and stress they're going through. You think about it, you don't, you know, a good gentleman, an intelligent person doesn't go around swearing the whole time. But in a state of absolute panic, horror, shock and disgust against the situation he finds himself in, that he could be possibly moved to fuck. But what the fuck? What the fuck? You know, you know, you never know what he's going to say. It could be a long, loose thing going on for many more. Anyway, anyway I'd just like to say, 
You can't damn me, Judge. Because you're not God. <laughs>